Forces Day at Selfridge Air Force Base, Michigan, draws a large crowd of visitors who find an Army Globemaster a point of attraction. But the real guest of honor is the Chrysler-built Redstone guided missile, one of the newest in the arsenal of the atomic age. In honor of the day, some of the newest jets put on a show. At Eglin Air Force Base in Florida, the dramatic destruction of a B-17 bomber, a Scorpion attack plane launches its rockets. Unscheduled, however, is this crash landing of a Cougar jet aboard the carrier Essex. Defense Department pictures show its mad skid across the flight deck and plunge into the sea. Alert sea rescue operations are instantly mobilized, and the pilot, barely missed by the carrier, is hauled from the water by a helicopter after nothing more serious than a shake-up and a ducking. Slightly complicated, but a happy landing for Lieutenant Herbert Camp, United States Navy. Nineteen July, aboard the U.S. aircraft carrier Valley Forge. A jet lands in the sea on takeoff. If you look in the water to the left of the plane, you can see the pilot. A helicopter is summoned to do an air-sea rescue job right beside the carrier. The pilot seems unhurt, suffering only submersion and shock. Navy personnel bundle him up and take him to sick bay. These scenes are photographed by gun cameras of the attacking Navy plane. They show some of the damage inflicted on North Korean targets in this carrier strike. Most of the missiles seen are rockets and tracers. These attacking planes of the carrier Valley Forge are operated in conjunction with other units of the 7th Fleet, which left their normal duties of protecting Formosa to give air cover to the amphibious landing of the 1st Cavalry Division at Pohang. After this landing, made yesterday, these planes are now ranging far and wide over North Korean territory. Strike over, the planes return to their floating bases. One of the returning fighter planes seems to have disabled its landing gear during the strike. Firefighting crews and medical corps men race toward the plane to make sure it doesn't catch fire and that the pilot is safe. The pilot climbs out of the cockpit under his own power and the deck is cleared for another plane to land. As one plane lands, its rockets are jarred loose. Crewmen rush to retrieve them and throw them overboard. Actually, there is little danger of these rockets exploding as they are electrically detonated and the connection was broken when they were jarred loose from the plane. But it's played safe. A scoreboard on the Valley Forge totals up the knockouts in today's strike. This is the pilot's view of an air attack on North Korean positions during the week of 26 July. These scenes were filmed by a U.S. Air Force gun camera in an F-80 jet plane.
a familiar scene to veterans of World War II. B-29 Super Fortresses in Okinawa are being prepared for bombing missions on communist-held positions in Korea. These aircraft of the 19th Bomb Group are being primed for strikes on Hung Nam in the north and on Seoul, main artery of communication for the North Korean forces. Bombs are prepared and rolled into position under the super forts. There the bombs are swallowed up in the Bombay bellies of the planes. Loading and preparing the aircraft is completed while the flight crews receive last minute instructions. When briefing is complete, the planes are ready to take off. As these B-29s fly to Korea, UN ground troops are attacking in the southern sector where the North Koreans are massing for an offensive. The raids of these superforts on Hung Nam and Seoul are planned to help cripple the long supply lines that run to the communist positions in the south. Over the target, it's bombs away. Seventy-two tons of explosives on the Reds' vital railroad. At an advanced fighter base in southern Japan on 4 August, F-80 jets are readied for a mission against the North Koreans. The cameraman who filmed these scenes is also going along in one of the planes on this mission, and you will see this air attack from the cockpit. These are oversized fuel tanks developed to keep the plane over the target longer. This fighter plane outfit has been in action since the start of the Korean War. Most of these pilots have flown 30 missions. A few have already flown 40 missions. Most of the following footage is taken from the rear cockpit through the plexiglass canopy of a T-33 jet plane. The ghost image you see is the reflection in the plexiglass. On the ground at this time, the Reds have advanced 75 miles from Tejan, and the Battle of the Naktong River is in full force. The battle for the Pusan beachhead is beginning, the decisive battle of the war. This is the sixth week of the war, and part of the increasing fury you will see expressed in the threat of these Air Force planes as they zoom over the enemy territory. As more and more men and weapons move in against the Communists on the ground, more and more warplanes fill the air above them. This is typical Korean scenery. Wide, shallow rivers, rice fields in the flatlands, rolling hills on the horizon. Much of the fighting in Korea has been along the roads. These roads have aided the North Korean tanks considerably. The chief obstacle to tanks in Korea has been the rivers, but even when bridges are blown, the communists ferry tanks across, usually at night, to prevent detection by the U.S. Air Force. Mission completed, the jets peel off and head for home. 